Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome to my podcast. Um, my name is Amaryllis. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you've already visited my channel, welcome back. It's been a hot like two years since I've recorded, since I've posted, since I've done anything like that. So um, I'm back. I'm back. I'm here and um, yeah, I've just been going through a lot of life as we all have. Uh, so the last time that I posted a video was in 2021. Um, and if any of you have been following my journey, you know that uh, in 2021 is when I experienced uh, the loss of a child. And so uh, it took a lot. It took a lot from 2021 to now we're in 2024 to get to this point where I was ready to get back on camera and just pursue the things that I really enjoy that I authentically enjoy and love. Um, so uh, I decided to get back into my podcast in October 2021. I started the Digging Deeper podcast, which I was so in love with. I did three episodes and then right after episode three, I found out that I had um, lost my baby. And so it altered my life in an unimaginable way. Um, and that's usually how it is with loss, with unexpected loss, with any kind of loss or grieving process. Sometimes it takes a lot longer than you expect when you weren't expecting the thing that caused you to grieve in the first place, right? And that's the thing about humanity is that things take time because nothing is perfect, right? There is no specific time where you're supposed to recover, where you're supposed to uh, bounce back. There's no specific time frame for us as humans. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, here I am. Episode one. I really hope that you enjoy. In this episode, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my journey up until uh, this point and what to expect from the podcast, the things that I want to talk about. Um, and hopefully, you know, this is a place, like I used to say, um, that I still am going to keep saying, hopefully this place, this community, this platform, this podcast is a space where you can rest, relate and recharge. Um, uh, my mission with this podcast is really to provide a space for people who otherwise may have felt like they didn't belong anywhere, that they belong here, that they are accepted, that they are beloved, uh, that they are not judged um, or looked over, but really that there is someone out there who sees you, who understands you, who loves you genuinely, and who really wants to create space for you to be seen, known, and loved, honestly. Um I have an overarching experience in life with loneliness and uh, feeling like I never belonged, right? Of course, all of us belong somewhere. Uh, we know that the Bible says that we are accepted in the beloved, right? Um, in Ephesians, there is a place for us always. Um, especially with God, especially with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He died and rose again and he took on our sins and he conquered hell in the grave to make a place for us, right? Um, so even with all those truths and knowing that there is a place for me, I've still wrestled with feeling like I don't belong anywhere or with any specific group of people. And it's surprising um, that even within relationships, you can feel alone. Even within relationships that you've been in a long time, people you've known for a long time, you can still feel like you're never known and never seen. And you can still feel like you do not belong or you're not accepted, right? Proximity matters, 
but it doesn't always change that feeling, right? Being close in proximity physically to people or someone doesn't change the state of loneliness or of feeling like you don't belong. And I say all that to say that that is something that I have uh, wrestled with for the majority of my life for as long as I can remember, especially within friendships, relationships. Uh, I've always wrestled with the fact that I don't belong here. Nobody will ever truly know me, love me, and accept me. Um, And I'm learning now at the age of 34 that a good place to start as it pertains to acceptance and knowing and loving is with yourself, right? Uh, So just to backtrack a little bit, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, as you've already heard. Um, So this podcast is, a lot of it is going to be about my walk with Christ, right? Uh, It's going to be about the Bible because I love the word of God. I love the scripture. I love the mystery of it. Um, I love that you can read the same passage at different times in your life and it will hit in a different way each time. I love that the word is alive and living, right? And it works for our good, for our benefit, benefit to perfect us, to prune us, to trim away things from us. And I love that even in the mysteries of the word of God and in the spaces where we really don't understand, or maybe things seem incongruent, that those spaces are invitations for us to seek the one where the word came from, right? To uh, For us to seek the creator and say, you know what? There's a space here that I'm not really understanding or knowing, and I want to know more about you through your word. So please show me what it is that I need to see. I love that. I love that the Bible is full and true and complete and undeniable, right? Uh, but I also love that there's still space uh, within reading the word of God where we still have questions and those questions become invitations for us to uh, have greater intimacy with the one who created us, right? With the one who inspired the word, right? With the one who is the word in the flesh, right? Um, I'm talking about Jesus. (laughs) So... Yes, you're going to, that's going to be woven through everything. Um, The format here is going to be a lot about uh, the things that I write in my journal. I journal every day, almost every day. And that's where my truest, like deepest, rawest thoughts come out. And that's a lot that that place is where I receive the most um, clarity and revelation uh, from God. And so I'm going to be sharing a lot of that, um, tying it to the word of God, to real life experiences, and hopefully sometime in the future, having people on who identify with this kind of, I don't want to call it a philosophy, but just a way of being, of being just real and transparent and open and wanting to also relate and rest and recharge in community, in relationship and in just being vulnerable. So yeah, um, that's why I'm here. That's really what I want to do here. And um, I look forward to finding community here as well. Um, Going back to that sense of not belonging, I'm realizing now in this time in my life that a lot of the things I'm looking for are, of course, in God, of course, in Jesus, of course, in my relationship with Holy Spirit. Um, but a lot of those things, they start with me, right? Uh, the Bible says, Jesus said um, in the Gospels, I think it goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but I know it's in Matthew where he says, um, you love the Lord, like the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Um, but then he says, and secondly, um, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that loving yourself part, at least for me 
has been very hard to get a hold of, to hold on to, to really wrap my mind around and to accept the fact that there is a relationship with myself. I need to examine that relationship. I need to acknowledge that it's real and I need to work towards improving my relationship with myself. So if I don't feel like I belong in spaces with other people, do I belong here in this space with myself? Uh, If I feel like no one understands me or if I feel like I'm not seen, known, loved, and heard, do I see myself? Do I know myself? Do I love myself? Those are very important questions that I'm just now asking myself and exploring and discovering and trying to understand. There is a sense of self that is very important to to discover. And a lot of times in religious communities and in like, you know, the church, um, is very much based on service, right? So we serve others and there's a lot of joy in that. And it's biblical. We should be serving others. Um, but then when it comes to ourselves, we feel like that relationship is not important. And, um, at least I do, especially in so much service to others, that line, or that boundary where it says, oh, well, I do need some time to take care of myself, it often gets very blurry um, and it often gets deprioritized because the lack of understanding we have about our relationship with ourselves may lead us to believe that anytime we try to serve ourselves in any way, that we're being selfish or that we're taking away from someone else or that we're somehow being sinful because we're taking time to check in with ourselves and to love ourselves and to see how we can serve ourselves better, right? Um, It is possible to prioritize your relationship with yourself, to prioritize your relationship with others and how you serve others in the community around you, um, even in your local church or whatever service looks like for you. It is possible to prioritize your relationship with God first, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others. It is possible for all three things to operate and for all three things to be true and to be going well. You do not have to sacrifice yourself or your sense of self um, because you think it's selfish or it's just not important or as important. All three things are important. Most importantly, God your relationship with God. But what I've realized and what I've learned in my secret time or my quiet time with God is that a lot of times when you're speaking with God, he's going to show you himself, of course. He's going to teach you things, but he's also going to give you a mirror, right? Um, That's been my experience anyway, is that God is faithful to speak to you, but he's also faithful to speak to you about you. Um, and so I wasn't really sure what I was going to talk about when I got on here today, but I do believe that it's time, uh, for those of us, for those of you who may be anything like me, um, to really prioritize our relationship with ourself, um, to, and when I say that, I'm not saying you live for yourself and no one else, but I'm just saying that think about how do I take care of myself? Do I love myself? Um, Do I feel strong? Do I feel empowered? Do I feel, do I really believe that I'm worthy of love or affection? Do I really believe that I'm worthy of, of good relationships, of belonging and acceptance? When this isn't right, when this isn't right, when this isn't right, these lateral relationships are never going to be right. When we truly invite God into us, into our hearts, into what's really going on in our minds, our thoughts, like 
the real truth about ourselves, when we really align with God in that way, right, then, you know, vertically, it's kind of how I'm envisioning it, vertically, we submit to God, we align with God, we invite him into our lives, our hearts, our minds, every part of us, right? He shows us who we are. And then in turn, in that alignment, we are able to really see ourselves for who we are and begin that deep work, right? Whether it's through therapy or safe relationships, safe community, um, or just being introspective and really being honest with yourself. When this whole relationship with you and your creator, with you and Jesus, with you and Holy Spirit, with you and yourself, when that is aligned, when that's right, may not be perfect, but when that is aligned, then these relationships outside of you, with your family, with your in your marriage, with your friends, your coworkers, then these things also fall into alignment, right? God will give you a vision for your life. God will reveal his will for you and your life and it will help you to really identify who you truly are in him and it will help you discover how beautifully and wonderfully made you actually are it all works together um but I really at least for me my goal in this time in my life is to understand the importance of relationship with myself. And in that understanding and in that exploration and in that journey fully, allowing God to show me what I need to see, what maybe perspective I have might need to be fixed, or maybe there's some underlying sin that really I need to be delivered of, right? Or maybe, you know, there are good things about me that I can't recognize without him showing me what they are. So that's the journey I'm on. And I feel like I want to go to Psalms 139. Uh, I want to go to Psalm 139. And of course, we, those of you who are familiar with scripture, um, even if you're not, you might have heard this before. And I had just recently mentioned it about being beautifully and wonderfully made, how you are purposefully made. There is, when the creator made you, there was no mistake that he made, right? He made you and intended to make you the way that he did. Uh, but that's actually not the part that I want to read in there. So Psalm 139, let me find that. I had a whole nother scripture planned out, but I'm going to go with this. Uh, cause I feel like, I, I feel like this is where we need to go. So Psalm 139, so I'm reading out of this Bible. I have a couple of Bibles, but this is the chronological life application study Bible. Um, this is new living translation. It looks like this. Uh, I love this Bible because it's in chronological order. So it's kind of cool to read the Bible that way. Um, but they don't take anything out or add anything to it. It's just in a different order. Uh, so Psalm 139, at the very end of this Psalm, I come back to this a lot when I really, really need it. And it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything me in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. The reason why I wanted to go here is because this really emphasizes the importance of you seeing and knowing yourself but you inviting God to also show you what he sees. It works together, right? They're both important. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Uh, I've, I've looked into um, the definitions of these words and search me and know me means to really know deeply and intimately. Um, to search is to really ask and pose 
really deep thought provoking questions, right? To confront, but not in an aggressive way, but to gently show you that mirror. Like, this is what I see. These are the parts maybe we need to work on. These are the parts that are truly who you are. These are the parts that other people have projected onto you that have nothing to do with what I made. And these are the parts that are still growing. These are the parts that are still maturing. These are the parts that you have excelled in. When we allow God to search us intimately and when we invite him to know us intimately, he's going to be so gentle. In my experience, he is very gentle, uh, but he is also very concise and he is also very practical. So he's never going to show you anything that maybe we need to work on or improve without actually giving you instruction, right? Even if he doesn't give you the whole plan laid out, he's going to give you a first step, right? He's going to lead you in paths of righteousness, right? Like it says in, I think that's Psalm 23, lead, he'll lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Um, but I just want to read this scripture because I feel like it's a good place to start when maybe if you're anything like me, you felt these feelings of like, something's not right. No matter what kind of relationships I engage in, no matter where I am in my workplace, no matter what projects I'm trying to pursue, I always feel like something's off. Like I just don't fit. Like there's something in me that's not right or like I'm just not feeling fulfilled. We have to really allow the Lord to examine our hearts and show us us. A quick and easy and simple prayer is, Lord, show me me. And if you don't have the words to pray, you can go to Psalm 139, verse 23, and just say, God, please search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. I just kind of want to let that rest right there. I know a podcast is a lot about talking, um, but I do want to allow space, if you are watching this, for you to just rest and reflect and pause in the word. Maybe even wherever you are, if you are asking God or praying this prayer out loud, just pause, slow down. And let the Holy Spirit begin to just minister to you, uh, begin to just pour out that healing oil and balm for the wounds that you may have, um, to begin to just correct maybe the ways that you have seen yourself that were not right, to just uproot those thoughts and beliefs about yourself that have been projected onto you by other people, right? that really have no authority or say in who you are and who God made you to be. I pray that right now, wherever you are, that you feel and know and receive the love that your Father has for you. And that the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal the word in you will begin to reveal the anxious thoughts you may have, will begin to reveal uh, the things that he knows about you in your life, in your heart, in your mind. And I pray that as you pray this prayer, as you read the word of God out loud, as you seek the Holy Spirit to give you understanding, I pray that this improves not only your relationship and intimacy with God, but that it improves your relationship with yourself. So with that being said, I just want to encourage you all, don't forget about yourself. Prioritize your quiet time with the Lord, prayer, worship, um, reading his word. Uh, but don't forget about yourself just like the word says you are beautifully and wonderfully made 
It says here, Psalm 139 and 13, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. And then in verse 16, it says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake up, you are still with me. I really pray and hope that myself and us here can really adopt and attach to and identify with those precious thoughts that God had for me, has for you now. He knew us before anyone else did. He knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. That right there carries so much intention and purpose and love. So let's just meditate on the word. Allow the Lord to see, to search us and to know us intimately and to start little by little to love ourselves and to see ourselves and to know ourselves and to be there, right, for ourselves, improve our relationship with ourselves. It's important. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to close out this podcast I'm really excited about where this is going to go. I'm really excited about where this episode went. If you have any thoughts or comments just about your journey on your relationship with yourself or loving yourself or what that has looked like or your journey, like if you're a new believer or if you've been walking with God for a long time, this, I want this to be a space where we can really exchange ideas and encouragement. And so I pray even over those comments that this will be a place of encouragement and growth and true love and acceptance and belonging. So my name is Amaryllis. This is the end of episode. Technically, this is episode four because I recorded three episodes in 2021, but we're going to call it episode one because we're starting over. <laughs> we're starting again. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I hope um, to see you back again, to hear from you. And I hope that this is a place where you can rest, relate and recharge. And I will see you guys soon.